As you know, as most of you know, there's been an ongoing battle with me trying to get a copy of the Azure a lab setup so that you can do this relatively, it's not literally dangerous. The viruses we look at are pretty benign in this class. They're not dangerous. They're not going to get out of control. But I've always wanted to have you operate it as if they were. And one of those really is doing all of this work remotely on a virtualized environment. I mean, we can replicate that locally in a virtualized environment, but really you tend to do this remotely, so it's not even on your desktop. Also, it addresses some concerns that ITS had about us opening up and looking at real viruses in our network. So um, we've been trying all semester to get this environment set up for you. If this doesn't work, then that's it. This is the final attempt at making sure that this works. If it doesn't work for you, but it works for the majority of the class, we'll do an exception by exception decision as to how we're going to move forward with specific problem cases. It might involve uh, you and I sitting down at the college while I stand over your shoulder and see what exactly it is that you're doing and why it's not working. If you have already set up a local environment and you prefer to use that, that is of course completely fine. But I would really like you to spend today and just give a really good go to see if this new environment that I have set up for you works for you or not. Okay. You should all have gotten an email today around um, 1130 or so. It looks very similar to the email I have displayed here on my shared desktop. A link that allows you to go to the lab and you log in as usual. It should register you for a lab. Can everybody try that link at this time? Because this is what broke yesterday or yeah, yesterday. This is what wasn't working yesterday, which is why you got a lab yesterday. I believe we have it resolved, but if everybody could test that at this time, open up the email that I sent you, click on the link and see if it'll take you to your Azure account and register you for the Malware Analysis Lab. It's this one here. It's the final lab to use with Malware Analysis. If this doesn't work, we'll deal with it case by case basis. This link should work for everybody. If you could go ahead and test it at this time, please and thank you. I'm assuming by the lack of comments that it's working for everybody. As always, when you go in to start up your Azure Lab, you have to toggle the machine on. And that's what we're seeing right down here. This little toggle button here allows us to turn our virtual machine off and on. It should turn off automatically, but it doesn't. So you have to make sure that you go in and you turn it on. And when you're done your work, you turn it off because you will burn through that 100 hours that I've allocated for you if you do not properly manage turning on and turning off all your virtual machines. Okay? If you shut down your Azure virtual machine without shutting down Remnux or Flare or Kali, if you're going to use that, those two can have problems and they can actually become corrupt. So machine discipline is very, very important. Has anybody not been able to start their virtual, or at least toggle on their virtual machine? As you can see, this will take a few minutes. When I upload the video, I don't think I'll have us sit here watching the machine turn off. It's taking a disturbingly long amount of time to start up. Has anybody's machine started up yet? Please be honest. Actually, I can tell. Some of yours have started up. Yeah, but you registered yours earlier, didn't you? Good Iqbal, are you in this room? Good Iqbal, yeah, yours, you registered user. Yeah, yeah, that's, but you would, you had already registered. Even though the email said not to, you clicked on the link earlier. But that's okay, I won't give you too much grief, sir. But yeah, just, um, we'll give it time. It seems like there's a bunch of people trying to start up their VMs, so that's good. Um, that's actually great. And this is what we're looking for. This is the, the indicator that our VM is running as we need. Okay. Once we see that, you can see that the icon that allows us to connect to our virtual machine goes from gray 
to blue. That means that we can now click on it and open it with RDP. If that doesn't work, you should be able to come up with a solution. And of course, the first time you do it, it says, hey, do you want to, uh, I don't know who this is, are you sure you want to connect? Yeah, I want you to connect and you can click the checkbox that says don't ask again. All right. And then it will present you with the login. The username is malware and the password is the same as before. You can click on remember me, but it doesn't really seem to help much and then click on OK. It will then try and make a connection. I keep having to move this over to this desktop because this is my second desktop and all of these pop-ups happen on my primary or my first desktop. That's why I keep having to move them off of from the right screen on towards the left. And then you will be presented with this. And then it basically says there's some problem with the certificate. Um, you can go through and view the certificate. It really doesn't matter. It's an Azure Microsoft certificate. I think it's hilarious that it's not being recognized because it's Microsoft services from Microsoft server to a Microsoft client using Microsoft certificate services. It's hilarious that it's not recognizing it, but do not ask me again and then click on yes. And then that will eventually fire up your virtual machine. After a while, <sighs> okay, so it shouldn't be doing this. Just sign off with Microsoft. Don't sign off with Microsoft. That should not have happened, but that tells me that this Microsoft is still trying to do updates to this computer, which we really, really, really didn't want happening, okay? Is everybody at this point where they see the new desktop? Are there any people who are not at this point as yet? Please be honest. It's looking promising. Got a bunch of VMs running, that's really good news. <laughs> That's funny, Imanshu, because you were there. Um, you were there first. Okay, Imanshu, have you successfully connected yet? Okay, thank you. So I'm going to assume everybody looks like this. Now, we don't have VirtualBox in this environment. When I tested this over the summer, VirtualBox worked fine. It wasn't as fast as this is, and I'll be the first to admit, this is operating faster than what I was doing with VirtualBox. <laughs> yes, I'm in. I see malware. Oh my God, what's going on? Yes. Um, when, I, when I looked at this over the summer, VirtualBox was good enough, and we knew VirtualBox, and I didn't want to teach you anything new on your final semester. I had thought of introducing you to um, Hypervisor, and that's what this is. There's three or four icons along the side here that kind of all look like network connections. They are remote desktop connections to virtual machines running inside of this machine, this virtual machine. There is also a file called passwords.txt. I have given you the username passwords for these virtual machines in a text file in your desktop. There's no reason for you to change these and there's no reason for you not to know the username passwords for these different virtual machines. Okay, again, right there. There's also the hypervisor manager. This VM management tool is similar to VirtualBox in that it allows us to manage and create virtual machines and manage the environment that they operate in. Okay, one of the things that I had set up when we take a look at um, the switches is that I had to add 
a new switch, an internal switch, as well as a default switch. The reason why I never wanted to use Hypervisor is because they don't, I'm sorry, Hyper-V, which is Microsoft's Hypervisor tool. The reason why I never wanted to use Hyper-V was that it didn't give me the host-only network that we see in VMware and VirtualBox. They have a private network, but it doesn't give us proper gateway addressing and it doesn't do DHCP for us. And I didn't want to have to create a DHCP server on top of everything else. It's host only network communications aren't that great. I don't like it. I prefer VirtualBox. I mean, I've been using VirtualBox for so long. Maybe I'm biased, but I really prefer how VirtualBox does a host only network. And I had built all my activities around that. I do not like how Microsoft does internal networking or host to host, um, sorry, guest to guest networking. So regardless, I have a workaround. Unfortunately, um, we will not be using the Python module, the simple HTTP server module that we used for sharing files. We're going to have to start up and turn off SSH services when we wish to move files around. But I will explain that to you in great detail, and I will create in the tips and tricks a quick uh, walkthrough as to how to do that in case you forget. Okay? At the end of the day, in the hypervisor manager, you can start and stop your virtual machines, but we created shortcuts on the desktop to let you do that as well including Kali. Even though we're not going to use Kali past today, I have given you virtual machines um, shortcuts right on the desktop. So when you go in, you're going to use Kali today. Double click on Kali. And then this is what you have to do. It says, hey, it's not running. You need to turn it on. Click on the start button. It will usually come up with something like this. Do you want to revert to the previous automatic checkpoint? No, I do not want to revert. You can see the default is continue, and it'll just keep going without doing a, um, a rollback option in the virtual machine. Okay? And then at this point, it is very similar to VirtualBox. Now it's just a virtual container to allow a virtual machine to start up. If you have not already done so, please start up Kali. Okay. Once Kali is up and running, I'm going to get you to log in. If you forget the passwords, they're right there. The username is Kali, the password is password. Has anybody been kicked out of Azure yet? Not yet. Always the optimist, eh? Good ball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Glad to hear it, Amanshu. Thank you. Okay. So after a while, your Kali VM will fire up. If it's too big, you can resize it. And as that text file said, the username is Kali. And the password is password. Once you're into Kali, you can make it a little smaller. Okay? Doesn't need to be that big. Hmm. Not letting me scale. Peculiar. Okay, well, it's not letting us scale, so hopefully you can see the whole of it. Anyway, the next one we need to fire up is Remnux, because I'm going to get you to redo the activities that you did when you created the virus in Kali and you deployed it and analyzed it in Remnux. That's going to be your test for today to make sure that this environment is working for you. Okay? This 
This is a smaller display. Hopefully you do not have the same display limitations I do. Unlike the Remnux that we set up together, this Remnux actually won't automatically log you in. This Remnux, you actually need to select the Remnux user, and the password is malware. If you were unsure, again, Remnux is the username, malware is the password. Okay. And once you have this in place, you basically have everything that you need. Okay. So, for example, in our lecture, when we took a look at creating a virus, this is the command we used, right? It's not going to let me do that. So the copy and paste isn't going to work into Kali. It might work into Remnux, but it won't work into Kali. Okay, so MSF Venom dash P for payload Windows uh, add user malware. With the add user payload, the user we specify, and we just give it a username. That's simply a username. Pass is another parameter we specify for that payload. And that is going to set user at one, two, three, just to use uppercase, lowercase, numbers, and the at symbol, and have eight characters in length. Strictly speaking, it's not necessary because we're never going to, de well, we might deploy this at some point now that we have Windows. But there might be policies in place that prevent you from creating a user with an invalid password. If you're creating a password, if you're creating a payload to do a malware attack, you want to mitigate against, you know, policy problems, I guess is what we're trying to say. So a, a password like this, as part of a virus that we're gen trying to create, we shouldn't have any problems. Just realized you might not be able to see my screen here, so... Um, Um, WMIC is equal to true. The, um, the file type is an executable and redirect that to a file called malware add user dot exe. Okay. And providing I don't have any typos, it should go ahead and create the virus for us. Please note I forgot to do the obvious, which is create a directory structure for my work. I forgot my own workflow instructions and I forgot to create an environment for myself. And right away, I have a typo. So when I take a look, I specified a payload of add ewer. I don't know what add ewer means, but I had a typo. So let's try that again. Perfect. Much, much better. Okay. Now that I have a, um, regardless, it doesn't matter. I'll figure it out later. I'll try and figure out how to restore that window. If you've made your window full screen and you figure out how to restore it, please let me know. Because I did it without realizing that there isn't a break key on my keyboard. know what that is so now that we have this in the past what we would do and I'm going to show you this um, are there any questions before I move on was any was everybody able to get theirs historically what we did any other questions Prince can you put your hand up inside of uh, 
Teams? Thank you, sir. No, not yet. Perfect. Thank you. Now you did it again. Perfect. Okay. Um, normally in the past, now that we had our payload, we would do Python dash M and then simple HTTP server. And then that would start up an instance of a basic Python based server that we could use to download our fires to another machine for analysis. I'm going to show you right now why that's not going to work. It's port 8000, should be fine. When I go over to, um, you know, that's not what I want. When I go over to Remnux, and I try navigating to that virtual machine, well, first I need to know what the, new, what the IP address is. And you think you know what your IPs are, they're very different. The IP address for this machine is 103, 192.168.56.103. That's right, because I set it up. I tried to set it up as familiar as you would have before. That's right. I fixed that. The IP addresses were all over the place. I wanted to make this as easy as I could for you, so I made the IP addresses very similar to the IP addresses we had in VirtualBox. So everybody should be seeing basically the same IP addresses as me because I set these all up the same, make our lives a little bit easier. So that's my IP address right there. So now when I go over and I try to go to that IP address, 192.168.56.103 port, 8,000. Oh, well, would you look at that? It's working. Well, there goes all my fun stuff I was going to do today. Well, blasted damnation. I had a whole thing set up for you guys to struggle. Like it was going to be awesome. Hmm. All right. Okay, well, that's because that's okay. Okay, there it is. Just give me one sec. I'm having some display issues as well. In my, um, because I didn't create my proper directory structure, this didn't work last time. So one of the tweaks I made to the networking must have fixed the problem. And I didn't realize it because I've since rebooted the machine and that clearly solved the problem. I'm happy. Because what I had set up in lieu of this was using WinSCP. But if this is working, this is a very good thing. Um, if we're still struggling with it when we're trying to download stuff from yeah, that's where the problem is going to be. Okay, well, we'll deal with that in the future. When it comes time to take viruses off of Remnux and put them into Windows, this might not work because that's where I was testing it, I think, last time, where I did my last testing, and that still wasn't working. But if it's working, perfect, no problems. Okay, so I can then right-click, save link as, Again, I am in Remnux. Go to my home directory. Go to my add user directory. And save the file there. And then I can perform my analysis. I can then close the browser. CD into add user. And then I can do my strings analysis, I can do all the analyses that I want, okay? Once you have logged into your virtual machines, and this is all of them, all of your virtual machines, they must be shut down properly, okay? Which means typing exit, 
typing exit in the terminal. All right, this saves your command history to your history file so you can go back and prove that you did the work at a later date. Okay, exit your terminal. Don't just shut them down, exit them. Don't just power off the virtual machine by hitting the close button. Select the drop down in the upper left corner and the power button and then power off the virtual machine. Once it's powered off, then you can close it. Look for the status equals off in the status bar. Same thing with Kali. All right, exit. Exit. Well, let's click inside. Maybe that'll help. All right. Exit. 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 That was Remnux, that wasn't Kali. Select the shutdown option for Kali. Okay, and once that's shut off, yeah, then you can power that off. If you're unsure about the status of your virtual machines, you should always check and make sure that their state is off. Okay, the way we do that again, we go to the Hyper-V Manager, and it will select our machine and will list the virtual machines on our physical machine. And it lists these three as being powered off. Once they are off, then you can shut off the malware via shut down. Once that's done, you lose your remote desktop connection. However, your virtual machine is still running. Go to your Azure Labs um, portal. All right, your virtual machines. Sign me in already for crying out loud. Once you're at this point, you will see that the machine is still running. This is unacceptable. A couple of you have really run up a lot of hours because you left your machine running. Even though you told Windows to shut down, Microsoft, being Microsoft and just this side of being criminal, leaves the machine running until you toggle it off. You want it to be stopped. Okay, shut down your virtual machines in Hypervisor Hyper-V. All right, shut down two or three virtual machines. Shut down the Azure virtual machine, the one with the big red malware. And once that's done, go into My Virtual Machines in Azure Labs or Virtual Machines in Azure Labs and stop the VM from running because you will rack up hours and hours and hours and hours okay are there any questions on that